and have uh, allowed LGBTQ to be registered as an NGO in this country. One of the questions I asked the Chief Justice, because I called her personally, and I asked yesterday in the media, when an association is registered, the articles of associations are clear. Because they spell out what that association is going to be. If you register a football club, we all know they are going to play football, isn't it? If you register uh, a circle, we all know that they are going to lend money and keep credit for people and uh, help people acquire loans. And that's why the articles of association will spell out. And I asked the Chief Justice, and I'm asking Kenyans, what are the articles of association of LGBTQ? Well, we all know that they promote homosexuality, and I asked the Chief Justice, is homosexuality no longer a crime? She says it is a crime. Then how do you legalize people who are going to promote the crime? Then I ask her the second question. Now that you have registered them, using the article that Kenya has freedom of association, when bandits in West Pokot want to register a bandit association, are you going to register them? When Al-Shabaab want to be registered as an association, are we going to register them? Or Mongiki or any other outlawed group? These are the questions we must ask ourselves as a Christian family. This attack is not just an attack on humanity, but an attack on creation and the creator himself. Because God did not make a mistake to pronounce that Adam is lonely and when he was looking for a helper, he did not go for another man. He went for a woman. And that's how God has designed it. And if we go against the natural order that human beings, animals, and even plant science is telling us today, the pollens have both a male and a female. And until the male part of the pollens meet the female part of the pollen, fertilization happens and bearing of seed will happen. So how can we allow ourselves to go against the natural order God has created and pursue things that do not satisfy? Because I don't think a gay relationship satisfies. It is a fallacy. It is, uh, you know, it is just driven by money and people who want to pervert what Christian faith is all about. You have seen me stand against my church in England, and I said this to the Archbishop of Canterbury. Has now the church in England uh, removed homosexuality from the list of sins that the Bible calls sin? He could not answer. Then I said, why do you bless it in the church? He said, I'm blessing people and not the sin. Then I say, but we bless people in their context of where they are. If I bless you in the context of a business, I bless you and your business. If I bless you in the context of a family, I bless you and your family. If I bless you in the context of a farm, I bless you and your farm. But if I bless you in the context of a gay marriage, I bless you and that marriage, which the Bible calls sin. Then I ask the last question. In whose name are you going to bless? In the name of the very God who says it is sin? Are you going to invoke the name of God? What I want to say is that let us stand firm, the Christian family, and say no to what is not right before God. The West is introducing new agenda items in the Christian church. And one on the table already in discussion is to bring what they call gender neutral language and change the Bible to remove anything male or female. And the same question I ask, what will become of our doctrine of the Trinity, where we believe in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? How will we recite our creeds, which is the fundamental of our faith? I believe in God the Father, the maker of heaven and earth, and in the Son, Jesus Christ. The Son is a male. Then I ask, the Bible is full of person stories. How will you tell the story of Abraham? How will we tell the story of Moses? 
How will we refer to Moses? What name are we going to give to him? Or Jeremiah? Or Deborah? Because they want to remove both male and female. Or Eve? What are we going to do? Friends, the devil is on the offensive attacking the Christian faith. Let us stand firm in prayer and deepen our faith in the Lord. May God bless you and bless us together.